to help me, I was building a dream. And so I followed the mob. When there was earth to plow or guns to bear, I was always there, right on the What was the Great Depression really about? Was it the bread lines? The stock market? The music? The dust storms? Stud Turkel claimed something different. Why should I be standing in line? His book, Hard Times, is focused on a dual theme. <clears throat> the first part says that one's experience during the Depression depended on either their social or their economic status. The second part basically pins the blame for the Depression and its severity on society during the 1930s. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you Hard Times isn't a typical book. It is composed entirely of commentary concerning the Great Depression. Its subjects were all over the economic and social spectrum, from small, broke farmers who moved to the big city only to suffer more, all the way up to the big business owners who only experienced horror through the words of others. Not only are there those who lived during the Depression, but there are also the descendants of those people included. Turkel attempted to make his book as comprehensive as possible. The audience is obviously those already educated about the Great Depression. Turkel offers no background information, no timelines, nothing. He expects the reader to have at least basic knowledge of the Depression. He dives right into the big events and ideas in his interview and doesn't stop to explain anything. Ideally, he may have included a timeline or some other device to clear up any questions that may have been raised in the reader's mind, especially if those readers are not yet acquainted with the subject matter. The book is again organized into interviews, yet the way the interviews are grouped is wholly unclear. He splits them up into books, each of which is split up into subsections. I can sense a bit of continuity in these subsections, but they're not really cohesive. For example, the section titled Big Money in one book revolves around subjects who didn't suffer as much during the Depression. Book one, however, is made up of other seemingly irrelevant subsections, so it's up to my discretion and rearrangement of material to figure out how it relates to his theme at all. His thesis is found in varying degrees of subtlety throughout hard times. For the first part, his theme is supported simply in the structure of his book. Hard Times features commentaries, and the range of lifestyles is quite astonishing. The re reliability of his resources must also be questioned. Readers are given a brief description of the subject, and possibly some background information on the role they played in the Depression. However, most of the time, readers are given nothing but their name and a few words denoting their career or something along those lines. If their ages and are included past the regular an er elderly woman or a teenager, it's usually just the number. While a number is better than nothing, the date of the interview is never listed. I had to search for the book's publica publication date to find a relative time. It was published in 1960, but Turkel apparently gathered interviews for several years prior. Another problem with the sources is that all of them were gathered after the Great Depression. While it is not expected that Turkel actually get the interviews during the Depression, it would be nice to know when these were actually taken. Tekel does explain some of these main issues in his book in a personal memoir. He says, this is a memory book rather than one of those hard fact and precise statistics. The precise fact or precise date is of small consequence. This is neither a lawyer's brief nor an annotated sociological treatise. I, it is simply an attempt to get the story of the Holocaust, known as the Great Depression, from an improvised battalion of survivors. That there are those who are untouched, or indeed did rather well, isn't exactly news. This has been true of all disasters. The great many were wounded, and in one matter or another. It left upon them an invisible scar. The suddenly idle hands blamed themselves rather than society. True, there were hunger marches and protestations to City Hall in Washington, but the millions experienced a private kind of shame when the pink slip came. No matter what others suffered the same fate, the inner voice whispered, I'm a failure. True, there was a sharing among many of the dispossessed, but at close quarters, frustration came at times, violence, and violence turned inward. Thus, sons and fathers fell away, one from the other, and the mother, seeking work, said nothing. Outside forces, except to the more articulate and political rebels, were in some vague way responsible, but not really. It was a personal guilt. In those words, Turkel clearly defined his thesis and the goal of writing the book. While that is all good and well, Turkel only includes this in a separate work. 
He does not give this explanation in the actual text. The edition I ordered had this memoir included in the front of the book, but that is not the case with all editions. Turkel potentially leaves the readers to flounder with deciphering all of the interviews and then combining them into one cohesive thesis. Again, this is just an issue with explaining the work and its motivations. All in all, I would recommend this book. Despite its minor flaws as listed previously, it is still a pretty good book. Not only is the content entertaining, but it also provides an overview of di the differing perspectives during the Depression. It's a good basis for a more detailed education of the time period. Stay away, but it costs more than I can pay. Without you, I can't make my way. I surrender, dear. I may seem proud and I may act gay. That's just a pose. I'm not that way, cause deep down in my heart I say, I surrender, dear. All oh, those little mean things we were doing must have been part of the game. Lending a spice to the wooing. Ah, oh, but I don't care who's to blame. When stars appear and shadows fall, then you'll hear my poor heart call. My love, my life, my all I surrender, dear
It don't mean a thing if you ain't got that swing. It don't mean a thing, all you've got to do is sing. Makes no difference if it's sweet or hot. Give that rhythm everything.